This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. One in three married people feel lonely. They report feeling lonely. One in three. I mean, I want you guys to, I want you to like literally visualize this. So I want you to think about three of your best friends, right? One of them feels lonely, which means homegirl, you're not alone. There's somebody else. I'm not saying that like we're recruiting or anything, but like literally there's one more person that feels this exact same way. That's literally in your group circle. Like they're in that group circle and they're feeling that same way, but nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. Hey girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected, and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. I'm married and I feel so alone. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with us? Is this common? I remember when Willie and I, we weren't doing too well. I didn't realize how bad we were. I kind of was like, I I was faking the smile. I was totally faking the smile. But it was Christmas. Well, it was coming up to Christmas, so we were in December. And Willie and I were separated. I just had Aaliyah. So Aaliyah was born in August and it was December. So what is that? August to September, September, October, October, November, November to December. Willie hates when I do that. But that was four months, right? Four, Aaliyah was about four months. And I giggle because if Willie was to watch me do that, he'd be like, are you kidding me? And then he'd correct me and tell me to count it some other way. Anyways, I digress. Aaliyah was only four months old. It was December. Willie and I were separated. Again, I didn't think our relationship was that bad. We were separated, but I mean, it wasn't that bad. We were fine. Everything was going to be fine. And I think his job, like, because he was a drill instructor at the time. And so I think the fact that he was gone so much, it kind of, 
excused his absence in a way. But there I am decorating the Christmas tree and I'm talking to her. And so I'm putting the ornaments and I'm recording. Yes, I'm totally recording. I'm videotaping this because I wanted it to be her memory. I I wanted I wanted her memory. So when she looks back at this videotape, like it was like, oh my God, even though my mom, you know, even though my dad was away at work, like my mom still, you know, continued family traditions. Like it still happened and it happened for me. And this is so amazing. I have like the perfect family. What she didn't know was that Willie and I were, were in the process of divorce. We were separated. He wasn't living at the house. And decorating this Christmas tree, having a conversation with a four-month-old, totally pretending that everything was okay when it sure as shit was not. But it was so important for me to pretend that it was, it was fine. Everything was fine. And um, to be honest, I don't know if it was really for her. I think it was for me. We weren't talking that much. It was weird. And I didn't know what was happening. And I wasn't ready for that to be my reality. But I knew I definitely felt alone. But I was trying to mask it at all costs. Mask it with my family. Mask it with everyone. And it was so hard for me. It was so, so hard for me. But I needed to do it, right? I needed to do it for my daughter. I needed to do it for, you know, for everybody. I needed to do it for me because that reality that our relationship was not going well, was not good. And it it just left me with this sense of hopelessness that I wasn't about to go ahead and allow myself to feel. And to, to be honest, it's because I didn't know how to feel it. I didn't know what to do with these emotions. Nobody taught me. I didn't have any skills. I didn't even know how to process it. So because I don't know how to process it, why not ignore it? That's like the smart thing to do. Ignore it. And so that's exactly what I did. I ignored it. And I pretended it was fine. I, I pretended it would go away. And it didn't. We were, you know, it's the holidays. So guess what? You're around family and they're asking you questions and you have to lie. You think you have to lie even more. And I have to fake this. I have to fake the smile. I have to fake the joy. I have to fake all of this. That's exactly what my thoughts were. I never really approach the situation. I I didn't because I didn't know how. And so I faked the smile. I faked everything. Nobody knew. Nobody knew how much I was hurting inside. Nobody knew how much I was avoiding. Nobody knew. Nobody had any clue. And the reason why I'm bringing up this topic, you know, on this holly jolly month is because it's important You know, married couples actually do feel alone and they don't have to be where Willie and I were at. Willie and I were literally, we were separated, but it's everything leading to that, that couples completely ignore and avoid. And I'm here for you. I'm, I'm here to go ahead and break through that silence because it's so important. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't shit, What's knocking on the door? Depression, anxiety, and all of these other things because you decided that you refused to go ahead and face reality. And I get why. I mean, shit, the internet and social media is plastered with all of these happy couples and you're probably getting, you know, Christmas cards from your family, you know, and pictures of their family and how everything is just so great, you know, and you're getting pictures of people shopping and you're getting pictures of people kissing and you're getting pictures of parties and all of these joyous occasions. And yeah, it just puts so much pressure on us because it's like, well, wait a minute, why don't I have that? And then envy comes along. And then it's like, how the hell did I get initiated into the world of comparisons? How did I get here? And yet I'm here and I don't know what to do with it because my husband and I haven't had sex. Can't remember the last time we went on a date. And every single conversation we have ends up in an argument. Does this sound familiar? 
Mama, you're not alone. You're not alone. This impacts our relationship substantially in so many ways. But ignoring it, ignoring it is only going to make it bigger. It's only going to make it that much bigger of a monster. One question I get often is, how do I feel so lonely when I'm married? Is this common? My answer is yes, absolutely. Matter of fact, one in three married people, married couples, right? Married individuals over the age of 45 report feeling lonely. And that's according to a national survey that was conducted back in 2018. So imagine if one in three married couples felt lonely. Imagine what those results are now. And I know you're dying for them. I don't know where they're, I don't know what they are. I've tried looking for them, but I can't find them. And that's just me being honest. But that alone, like, holy shit, one in three married people feel lonely. They report feeling lonely. One in three. I mean, I want you guys to, I want you to like literally visualize this one in three. So I want you to think about three of your best friends, right? Three of them. One of them feels lonely, which means homegirl, you're not alone. There's somebody else. I'm not saying that like we're recruiting or anything, but like literally there's one more person that feels this exact same way. That's literally in your group circle. Like they're in that group circle and they're feeling that same way, but nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. Why would we talk about this, Veronica? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's so important that we understand it. It's so important that we do something about it and we have support. It's so, so important. And let me tell you something. Although there is research studies that prove this is common, it's also so important to recognize that this is is a sign that the relationship is in danger. Oh, Veronica, you're catastrophizing it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not, homegirl. Guess what? Every single thing like this results in therapy or results in divorce. That's crazy that people are literally like, well, you know what? Screw it. Let's just get get a divorce. It's been this way for so long. We're not going to change it. Screw it. Fuck it. Fuck it. You're foot one foot in, I'm foot one foot in. We've been doing the same thing. Nothing's changed. So let's just end it. That's not true. That It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to end in divorce. It doesn't have to continue this way where you're feeling alone. And so one thing you're probably wondering is, how did this happen? Well, most couples feel lonely in a marriage when there's a lack of connection, unhealthy communication, lack of support or appreciation, if there's financial issues, if there's a lack of intimacy and sex, if there isn't a date night, right? If you guys aren't prioritizing the relationship, yeah, that's how it happened. You guys stopped prioritizing the relationship. And unfortunately, this can happen very easily in a marriage, especially when you have kids, The household chores, work, sports, and routines slowly take over your schedule, leaving no time to connect with your partner. The relationship takes the back seat while everything else is put to the forefront. The marriage is neglected. One thing I often see couples do, and I'm not blaming, but I'm just giving you an example. One thing I often see couples do is, The women will prioritize the household chores and the kids and their to-do list. The men will prioritize work as well as the to-do list. They both stick to these roles because it's easy. It is so much easier to check this off the box and they don't have to address the issues in their marriage. Another fact is lack of skills. They lack skills to communicate effectively, leaving them with instant, instant, instant disconnection. When we're able to check off that box, think about how gratifying it is. The minute you have that to-do list, or in my case, a whole bunch of sticky notes, 
and you're able to check it off or crumble the sticky notes because it's done. It feels so gratifying, so validating. I'm doing something right. I'm able to check this off. This is done. You can't do the same thing with your relationship. It's impossible. Your partner's not a robot and neither are you. Unfortunately, because most couples lack skills, I find that they both tend to blame each other for feeling alone. They both have become dependent on their partner to fulfill their needs and provide them with validation. The problem with this is that it puts too much expectations on the relationship. These expectations are unrealistic. The truth is, and I know I say this often, but I'm going to say it again. It literally starts with you. Yes, I'm talking to you and you. If both of you guys are listening, if you and your partner are listening, I'm talking to both of you. It starts with you. It's important to identify what issues you're bringing into the relationship. Are you dependent on your spouse to provide you with validation? Are you relying on them to fulfill you? If you answered yes to any of these, mama, this is something you need to work on. It is unfair to your spouse and your relationship and will only drain your partner. I'm aware this is uncomfortable and may feel a little scary. Let me tell you something. Change feels uncomfortable. Change feels scary. I didn't realize how much pressure I was placing on my partner to define my worth. I had no clue that that's what was happening. None at all. I had no clue that I relied on him to go ahead and provide me with support. I'm not going to do this unless you support me. Here I am. I do all of these things so that you can go ahead and be promoted. But what things do you for, do for me? You don't do anything for me. And you don't even help me around the house. You don't do these things, you know? And so I felt worthless and it's your fault. I felt worthless and it's your fault that I'm feeling this way. And it's your fault that the relationship is this way. No, it's not. It's both of your faults that the relationship is here. And we can do something about it. But let me ask you something. Why do you choose to continuously blame? It's easier. It's easier. If it's his fault, well, then he has to deal with it. I mean, he's the reason why we can't have uncomfortable conversations anyway. You know, he's so negative. It's his fault. Ah, that's not necessarily true. What part do you play in this? Because you both play a role. Being able to identify what part you play is truly important. And it's helpful. It's helpful for the relationship. We've positioned our partner as enemy so often that it is very difficult for us to see outside of that. Um, Let me quickly give you an example. And this is a personal example that like literally just happened. Um, Willie had called me and mentioned to me that there was a mistake. There was a mistake and it was a pretty big mistake. And it was, I'm not going to go into detail what it was about because I'm just not. But it was like, the first thing Willie said was, you know, I made a mistake and it was a big mistake and I know it was a big mistake. I'm so sorry. I was filled, flooded with emotions And when he said, I'm sorry, I was able to listen to that, but I was still so upset that I just lost it. I was so pissed. I was like, dude, are you kidding me? How the hell did you do this? Do you know what this means? Do you know how this looks on my end? Do you know what, do you know what this represents? Like, are you kidding me? How would you make that mistake? Why would you make that mistake? See, this is the thing. You always do this and you never spend time and you don't even care how important it is to me. You don't, you don't give a shit. You just wanted to check it off your box. You checked it off your box and look, I don't have time to deal with this. Like right now, I don't have time. I don't have time, but that's your expectation. Your expectation is for me to clean up your mess. Well, I'm not going to do this. So you figure it out. You figure it out. Oh, so pissed. I was so mad. I was so flooded. And I was like, you know what? I don't even have time for this. I got to go. And I just hung up. Willie and I always make it, 
how do you, how do you, I don't even think how, I can't even come up with the words. We always make, there you go. We always make it a point that before we get off that phone, we say, I love you. And I don't know where that came from, but we do. We always make it a point or before we leave, before we leave the house, we will, we will um, leave with a kiss. That's like, we've just made it a point. It's not something like set in stone, but it's just something we've been doing since we were, we were dating, I think. Maybe I'm lying. I don't remember. But I know for damn sure since we've been married. And I literally hung up the phone. And I felt so guilty for hanging up that phone. And I started going over um, some – I had to go to a meeting. So I started going over whatever I needed to go over before the meeting, went to the meeting. And I couldn't get that conversation out of my head. I literally blamed him. I shamed him. I criticized him. I positioned myself higher than him. I was contemptuous. I did all of those things. Because what I was experiencing was too much for me to experience. And if I was to go ahead and share this with my friends, well, duh, he was wrong. He was wrong. He should fix this. He should fix this. And yeah, yeah, okay, so he apologized. But this mistake keeps on happening. Why the hell does this mistake keep on happening? You know, I'd probably have all of you guys on my side. I could probably convince you guys to be on my side. But that's exactly what we do. We convince ourselves that we're right, they're wrong. And then we win. But the relationship loses. The relationship loses. Okay, so what? You proved your point. But you made your husband feel like shit. You feel better about yourself? This is what I mean. We do this all the time. And so now let's do something about this. Step one, grab a pen and paper. You already know if you're listening to me, you already know that you got to get a pen and paper because we're taking notes. You're about to learn today. It's about to happen. All right. Step number one, communicate. It is time to speak up and share how you're feeling. Veronica, I'm not communicating. The last time I communicated, it didn't work so well. Well, that's because you both got defensive. You used criticism. You used a harsh startup. You probably probably did everything I taught you not to do. Probably did that. And I get it scary. So we're going to do it anyway. What if he blames me? What if he becomes defensive? I've already told him and he doesn't listen to me. Ah, you know how many times I hear women say that? Girl, I've already done that. I've already done that. He doesn't listen to me. Okay. Well, what is his reply? Well, his reply is he never gets to talk because I don't listen to him. Oh, so you guys both feel that same way. Listen to understand. Listen. I understand your hesitation. I understand that this is so uncomfortable and requires you to be vulnerable. I get that. I get all of that. But what you're doing isn't working. Proving him wrong, it's not working. It's time we do something different. Having conversations without criticism, blame, or judgment will increase connection, which is what we ultimately want, right? Try to stay away from saying that he is the problem. Remember, if you lead with criticism and blame, the conversation will end quicker than it started. If you start the conversation with what's called a harsh startup, it has a 96% fail rate. Another thing I often hear women say is, why am I going to communicate, Veronica? We've been married for so long. He should know something's wrong with me. Homegirl, your husband isn't a mind reader and more than likely he has no idea that you are feeling lonely. He probably has no clue. And I want you to think about it. If he knew how lonely you felt, is that something you would celebrate or is that something you would be concerned about? Ask him if he feels disconnected as well. Listen without interrupting him or judging his response. Even if you don't agree. I can't believe I have to say this over and over, but I know I do. Even if you don't agree. I know it's so hard because we do want to prove our point. And we do want to feel heard. But part of the problem is you guys both don't feel heard. And you guys have both created this unhealthy behavior where neither of you listen to each other. Neither of you are able to express your feelings with one another because criticism, contempt, stonewalling, defensiveness happens. And so instead, you guys are automatically ready for war. And so, yes, listen to understand. Don't judge. Don't interrupt. I know looking for the right therapist can be challenging. 
However, feeling overwhelmed and disconnected is even harder. Life is filled with several twists and turns, some more severe than others. We do our best to handle them as they come and find ourselves at a loss, not knowing what to do or who to turn to. The clinicians here at Outside the Norm Counseling are here to help. We are here to assist you through this time of need. Together, we will identify your strengths and goals and teach you healthy coping skills. Together, we will develop a plan to help you live the life you want to live. Our team is compassionate, genuine, and we take a great deal of pride in providing an empathetic, non-judgmental approach to all of our clients. It's time. You've waited long enough, whether it be for you, your child, or if you're in need of a couple session. We are highly trained clinicians ready to guide you. Schedule an appointment now by calling 951-395-3288. Again, that number is 951-395-3288. We're looking forward to meeting you and being a part of your journey. Another thing to do, ask questions. It would benefit your relationship if you both were able to identify when the shift started to occur. Again, Listen to understand even if you don't agree. One way of doing it is it kind of feels like we're roommates. And maybe this is just the way I feel. But it, it, it we're not as connected as we once were. And I recognize I play a role in that. Have you been feeling lonely lately? Have you noticed sort of a shift or transition or a transition in our relationship. And if he's quiet, allow him time to process this. You guys will have a conversation, but trying to force things out of him is not going to work. The next biggest thing, this one's so big, work on yourself and the issues you bring into the relationship. Veronica, why are you always getting on our asses? Because it's so important. And I'm calling both of you out. Work on yourself. What issues are you bringing into the relationship? Stop pointing out all the issues your partner's bringing into the relationship and look at your shit. It's better to have these conversations now before you're surrounded by an audience, right? Or by your kids. Or you guys, it's noticeable. It's like so... It's so noticeable that you guys aren't talking to each other. And there you go. Your mom or dad comes up to you and is like, what's going on? You guys okay? Your kids witness all of this. You want change? You got to be a part of it. What usually happens with couples is that they ignore the signs that there's something, that there's something wrong, that there's trouble in the relationship. I can't tell you how many times couples have told me, I thought we were just in a rough patch. And now the D word is being passed around. How did we get here? Most of the time, couples are under the impression that, well, that's not going to be us. That will never be us. Well, guess what, homegirl? I thought the same thing. I thought there was no chance in hell that would ever be Willie and I. There's no chance in hell. No chance in hell. Matter of fact, when I had finally shared and finally been honest with people about where Willie and I were at, they were like, what? No. And it's like, yeah, we're literally in the divorce process right now. Dude, that's impossible. I've looked up to you guys. Yeah, I know. I know. And divorce papers are filed. I haven't talked to him. You know, he, matter of fact, he didn't even have my number. Wait a minute. What? Veronica, it happens. And it's not something that you even realize happens or is happening. You, you're not even sure. You're not even aware of that. Like, no, dude, for real, we're down that road. We're on the path and we've been on the path for a year. We've been on the path for a month. Veronica, how is it that we don't even know? Well, because you ignored the signs that your relationship was struggling and you both slowly forgot the value of the relationship and the importance of making it a priority. You both thought it would maintain itself. Veronica, that's not true. We both know the value of the relationship. Bullshit. When was your last date night? When was the last time you shared a passionate kiss? When the last time when was the last time you guys held hands? When was the last time you actually had a conversation where you were able to hear each other? 
Were you able to understand one another? When's the last time you asked about your partner's goals and your partner's dreams? That's right. We did that when we were dating, but we didn't do it anymore. Guess what? You're on that road. What the? Yes. Yeah, you're on that road. You are. Veronica, you're full of it. No, I'm not, honey. I'm not. I wish I was. Hence the reason why I'm recording this episode. It literally bites you in the ass when you least expect it. So this is time we do something different. But in order to do something different, we have to hold ourselves accountable. And we have to stop pointing the finger. And I know it's so easier It's so easy for us to do. And I know we could quickly point out all of our partner's flaws. And I'm sure they could do the same thing. But the reality is, if we don't start holding ourselves accountable, our relationship will by ending or by struggling. And I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth brushing it under the rug. Deal with those emotions. Let's heal that pain. Let's get uncomfortable. If you find that you and your partner are struggling and it's difficult to have conversations without arguing, it may be time to seek professional help. A couples therapist can provide you with the tools, skills you both need to reignite the flame. A couples therapist will help you rebuild your relationship and strengthen your connection so you don't have to feel alone anymore. A couples therapist is not there just to hear you guys vent. That's not what a couples therapist does. And if you find yourself with one of them, fire their ass and let's find somebody else. A couples therapist is going to help you identify what past traumas are impacting your guys' relationship. What's really standing behind you guys being the best of friends We're going to go ahead and work on building and strengthening that friendship. We are going to work on helping you identify the issues you are definitely bringing into the relationship and why. The majority, when, when I'm working with my clients, the majority of the time, the past issues my couples bring in solely to the relationship is past pains that have not been healed, unhealed past pains. And we work on them and we're able to work on them because guess what? Guess what? I'm a therapist. I'm a therapist and I can help you get there. And we can motivate both of you. It's not a doomsday. And I know a lot of people have it, have have their thoughts where it's like, oh my God, if I'm going to a couple therapists and that's the end of it. No, it's not. Most of you don't come to us until it's the end. I'm encouraging you to come now. Come now. If you're ready, come now. Let's go. Let's get work done. If you are ready to take that next step, if you find yourself, yeah, this is too hard for my husband and I to do alone. If you find yourself in that slump, in that zone, in that, in that situation, let's go to work. Let's go to work. If you want to work with me, you can definitely go to our website, www.outsidethenormcounseling.com or you can also um, contact us. The phone number is, imp- I'm sorry, that's the Empowered and Unapologetic site. The phone number for you to call us is 951-395-3288. 951-395-3288. And I'll see how I can help you. I'm looking forward to helping you. Enjoy the holidays. We can all use a little help in our marriage, especially when it comes to communicating. I have created a guide just for you. And guess what? It's 100% free. I will give you practical tips and easy to use strategies to apply right now. That's right, right now, today. You all know I'm a huge advocate for you mamas and I am on a mission to help you experience true connection and stress-free living. Ladies, we are setting our marriages up for success. It starts with you. You will find this freebie here in my show notes or go to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash guide. The information I will be providing you is next level and people pay good money to get these tips that I will be giving you for free. Don't forget to share this with a friend who needs it.
What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020 and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. 
If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today.